Hi right, guys, welcome back to the show. And today we're going to be working on putting our vapor barrier on the ceiling. I know there was a lot of questions on how you keep your steel from sweating if you just have a metal roof with no um, sheathing on there. And what you have to do is you have to put a vapor barrier on the ceiling. So as you can see right here, I've started to put uh, vapor barrier across it comes down a couple inches down the wall so then when I put my drywall up it'll kind of hold that there but then when I put my next sheet up it'll overlap so just using this uh, scaffolding to put it up I'm doing about 10 foot swaths at a time um, being by yourself that's about uh, the only way you can do it without it ripping and then I just basically cut um, cardboard squares into like one inch squares and use those as kind of washers so I staple through those and that kind of helps hold um, the plastic up there so it's, get, it's getting cold here next week we're going to have a few days where it gets down to 22 so I want to get this vapor barrier all up on the ceiling it will help immensely just with keeping that cold air and even the hot air when it's hot out from coming down into the house so um, we're going to try to get all this up in the next couple days. I'm doing it by myself, so it's definitely a lot of work. And then where we have walls, I will just uh, go along with spray foam cans in the, in the ceiling and, and seal those edges wherever I need to once the ceiling's all in. I'll be able to see where there's light, and it'll be real easy to go along um, the tops of those plates and seal that off with uh, spray foam before I blow in the uh, fiberglass insulation. So let's get uh, let's get going. I am a little sad that these swings are going to have to come down. Uh, the kids have grand fun on those, and I'm trying to figure out how I can incorporate those into the into the house because. We've gotten a lot of enjoyment out of them. Even I have um, playing with the kids, so it's a little, little sad having to take those down. But um, it is what it is. We got to keep on moving. So, all right. So you can see here how the plastic's all sitting in the uh, scaffolding. Basically, what I did is I unrolled it all in the scaffolding, and then just kind of pulled it up as I went along, and that supported the weight of the plastic, so it wasn't pulling on the staples. Um, the scaffolding actually worked really well, um, but I found I have found that about a 10 foot wide section of plastic is about the most effective way to put this up. So here in a second, you'll see me cutting the little cardboard squares out that I was talking about, and without using the cardboard squares, you will rip the staples through that plastic and you will get really frustrated. Um, it's unbelievable the amount of holding power <laughs> that a little piece of cardboard has. And the nice thing about cardboard is, no matter what you put on the ceiling, whether it's drywall, whether it's shiplap, it compresses and it won't affect uh, your ceiling whatsoever. And it just adds a lot of strength uh, to that plastic as you're putting it up. I got this whole big area done. So now I'm going to do all these rooms back here, which they'll be smaller sections. All right, so the way I tackled all of the rooms, hallway, bathrooms, and the upstairs with this vapor barrier is I just broke it down into sections. Obviously, a room would be a section. Um, I got it cut to length and width most of the time, at least width. Um, I made sure that it came down the sides at least three or four inches. Um, this room that you see I'm doing right now, um, this was extra long, and then I just went through after I got it stapled and trimmed it off. And this worked really, really well. So if you're going to be doing this, just get it cut to width and just work your way across the room and making sure that you have enough plastic to come down the side of the walls a few inches so when you put your drywall up it can create that seal along that vapor barrier. All 
All right, we have the entire upstairs vapor barrier up. We'll check it out down here and then we'll go up, stay up above. Uh, so you can see up there and we'll talk about a couple things and questions that I've gotten. So, All right, so some of the questions and comments that I've uh, had on this vapor barrier are first, what is it? So the vapor barrier I'm using is a six mil plastic. It's pretty heavy duty. I like using the heavier stuff because it just the staples don't rip through and you can't just use just staples with this unless you just put a ton of them in and maybe have an extra guy. If you do this by yourself you're going to want to cut these little cardboard squares which I talked about just a minute ago and those have a lot of holding power and with the, that accompanied with that six mil plastic you will get good results. Um, the purpose of this vapor barrier is to keep moisture from the house from penetrating into the attic space, which is the same um, basically temperature and atmosphere as the outside, so that that warm, moist air can't get through into the attic and condensate on the steel. Now, if you have sheathed your roof before your steel, it would be just like uh, a conventional stick frame house and I personally don't think you would need to put the vapor barrier on. Putting the vapor barrier on is not going to hurt you if you do sheath your roof. So those are my opinions um, from my experience, but if you don't have uh, roof sheathing and you have a steel roof, you need a vapor barrier or you could possibly have condensation forming on your steel, on the underneath side of your steel, and it could be dripping. So. That's why we do that. So that covers what it is and what the purpose of it is. Now, so why didn't I put the uh, vapor barrier up before I built any of these walls? And I have a few reasons for that. And the first one is if I'd have put that vapor barrier up and had it across the whole entire ceiling before I built these walls, when I was standing the walls up, um, I'm pretty sure that I would have been ripping the plastic. Then I would have had to put nailers on, which I would have had to take them all up through an opening and put them on the top of the plates, nail them in, which I probably could have done all that um, fairly easily. But then when you think about all of the plumbing and all of the electrical that has to go up into the attic, putting your can lights in, putting your vent fans in um, and how many times you have to go up and down into the attic it would have been a nightmare and I'm pretty positive that all of this uh, vapor barrier would have been not ruined but I would have had a lot of holes to fix and it was just easier this way this this ended up going really well so if I was giving you any advice I would build all your walls get your top nailers on your top plates get all your plumbing electrical and all your wiring in before you put your vapor barrier up and you're if you're thinking well how does that keep um, moist from going up there so what you need to do is run your plastic down what I did is I just ran it down to the bottom of the plates top plates and then when I put my drywall up, that will sandwich up against that and create a seal, if that makes sense. So once you do that, um, you're going to be good to go. You're going to get a, a good seal all the way around the room. You're going to have a mo uh, vape, continuous vapor barrier on the ceiling. And then once your drywall is up on your ceiling or your shiplap or whatever you're putting on the ceiling, before you blow in your cellulose insulation, you can go up and walk along your top plates. And if you see any daylight or air gaps, you can seal that with spray foam in a can. Attic space above the house, now that the vapor barrier is up. And you start looking around. Look at all these can lights. Look at all the wiring. Look at all the plumbing. Um, there's just, there's no way 
that you would have got all of that in without damaging that vapor barrier if you would put it up first. So that is why I waited. And if you look along the edge of these walls, you can see that that plastic fits nice and tight along that edge. And once you put that drywall up against there, that's going to create a seal along that. And you're not going to have any moisture up here. So that's why I did what I did. Um, I think um, putting it up first for me would have been a huge mistake and I'm glad I did it the way I did it. It turned out really nice and you know it's it's the results were good so that's why um, you put it up after um, all your walls, all your wiring, all your electrical are done. Appreciate you guys watching and we will catch you on the next video.